Well, good morning, folks. It's good to be with you this morning, and welcome to church. Uh, just, a, just a few announcements to let you know. Um, one of the things that I feel is to be a good leader is to by example, so I'm going to be wearing my mask um, during the service, but the one thing that's very hard for me is that I'm not going to be able to smile at you, um, and I don't see the smile back. So if I put my the thumb up like this, that means I'm smiling, okay? <laughs> All right? And you could do the same back if you want. Um, so... <coughs> So um, let me tell you some of the things that are going on. Uh, we are having a Vacation Bible School meeting this coming Thursday at Common Grounds. We are looking at having our Vacation Bible School outside this year at Common Grounds uh, so that we're going to be meeting this coming uh, Thursday night at 6 p.m. Um, also, youth group, we're, we're going to be doing um, on a weekly basis. We had a really good time last week uh, with the kids that came, and, and um, we're going to be doing it again tonight at 6 o'clock and from here on out. Um, and we'll let you know as we do a little events, too, as well, with, with, the, with that coming up. Uh, youth group uh, is on Sunday nights. Uh, uh, we do the um, morning devotions um, Monday through Thursday on Facebook Live at 9, 9, PM, at 9 a.m., and if you can't see it at 9 a.m. exactly when we do it, it's there throughout the day. Um, in fact, you can probably go back and look at weeks past. Uh, we also do a Zoom meeting um, Monday through Thursday at 7.30 in the evening if you would like to join in. You, we usually have a fun discussion, discussion of something, um, some kind of a theme that relates to church or Christianity. Um, and then we usually have some kind of a quiz or a fun thing that we do as well. Uh, so that is, if you need the link for that ever, just let me know. Um, we can get that to you. And then we have Sunday school that is going to uh, be taking place at 9.15 um, during this season as well. One of the things, too, to let you know is that we are going to have three services for Easter. And we are going to take reservations for that. And our service times are going to be 8, 9.30 and 11, just like what we used to do, um, but we'll take reservations so that we know um, who's going to be there, and we can, we can follow some of the guidelines that are set in front of us. Any other announcements this morning that somebody wants to draw attention to? We, we have giant eagle food over there, uh, not as much as we had last week, thank God, but uh, we do have some. So with that said, um, let's begin our worship in the name of God the Father. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to call Kelly to do our Lenten reading and our call to worship. Hmm? Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, what you're about to do, do quickly. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, it's against the law to put this into the treasury since it's blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why it has been called the field of blood to this day. Thank you, Kelly. As you notice, we're going to be using the different objects during the, the Lenten season. Last week we looked at the cross. Today we're looking at the 30 pieces of silver. Well, let's open up with our, our opening hymn, Standing on the Promises. If you're able to, where you're at, if you could stand, um, and we'll sing it together. <laughs> Standing on the promises of Christ my King 
through eternal ages let his praises ring glory in the highest i will shout and sing standing on the promises of god standing 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 on the promises of god my savior standing standing i'm standing on the promises of god standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of god i shall prevail standing on the promises of god standing 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 on the promises of god my savior standing standing i'm standing on the promises of god Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises is of Christ my Savior standing standing I'm standing on the promises of God standing on the promises I cannot fall listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. You may be seated. So as we spend some time for like a, a children's time or even a congregational time, uh, I, I was at a gathering yesterday where we were talking about the n different names of Jesus. And he, we had like 50 some names that we were supposed to come up with. Um, anybody think of a, a name, another name for Jesus? Anybody? Just say that again. Well, Abba, Father, is a, a name because Jesus is a part of the Trinity, um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Anybody else have a name that you can think of for Jesus? Jehovah, okay. Um, Savior, that's a great one. Um, anybody else? Redeemer is another one I heard. That's a great one. Go ahead. The, Wonderful Counselor, and we can think of Prince of Peace and Almighty uh, Father, and, and um, we can think of also like things like uh, one of the words that we had yesterday was door. Um, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the true door. Anybody else who tries to enter in, another door is a thief or a liar. So door could be one. Um, I also think of Kinsman Redeemer and and a lot of other names we could probably say. But those names communicate to us different things about who Jesus is. Names are important, and as we live into those names of Jesus, we communicate who we are and how we trust in, in our Savior. So as we, we celebrate and thinking about names today, and thinking about promises and, and um, also the, the tearing away of self 
So um, let us remember who Jesus is. And we're going to go into a time of prayer. Is there any prayer concerns this morning that you might have that we might want to lift up? Anybody? Chris. Chris. Alan is dealing with lung transplant, so we can be praying for Alan this morning. Awesome. And Steve, how is Steve doing? A lot of healing. Steve um, is your son-in-law, um, and so we want to be lifting up Steve. And tell us again what he's recovering from. He had some kind of a surgery this past week. Valve replacement, yeah. So for a younger person too, right? Okay, Almeida. You became a an aunt when you were like before it was before you were born, right? <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's terrible that people have to do those kind of things. Yeah. I'm going to be praying for her. Anything else? Mark. A co worker that broke his leg uh, pretty severely. So, you can be praying for that. Margaret. Margaret's brother had a fall, and we want to be praying for him. And his name is Ed, right? Okay. All right. Sandy. Okay. Brother-in-law that's dealing with cancer. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Pray with me. Lord God, we thank you for this time that we can gather in such a place as this. Lord, keep us safe. Keep us knowing you. Um, we come before you acknowledging you. As we said, this, the different names we had for you this morning, we pray, Lord, that uh, we would remember those names. And as we go through the challenges that you bring into our lives, bring those names to us. Help us to remember that you are almighty, that you are a counselor, that you are a helper. And Lord, as we think about that, uh, we confess that we are people that uh, are distracted. We are people that do our own things sometimes and we ask that you would forgive us and set us anew lord we thank you for jesus and we thank you for the cross and as we think about these different symbols we think about the 30 pieces and how you were betrayed and we ask for forgiveness for that but we thank you for what you did on the cross for us for the resurrection that shows us that we too will someday be resurrected. We will have eternal life. And as we think about that, Lord, we, we lift up some of the concerns that we have. We pray for Alan this morning. Pray for Steve. We pray for those who are uh, dealing with things like cancer and um, other issues. Uh, we pray for a gentleman that has a, a broken leg, um, and we lift him up to you. We pray for Ed, who has had a pretty bad fall as well and does not remember it. Lord, as we, we think about these things, we also want to pray for those who are, are, are sick this morning that um, are part of our community, 
part of our church, part of our world. We, we want to pray for those who may be dealing with loss. And Lord, one of the things that, since I've gone through it now, and it's so, so um, close to me, I want to pray for those who are caregivers this morning. And I just pray, pray that you would give them the strength and the endurance to get through that. To, to not just get through it, but to shine and to love those that they are taking care of and to take the breaks that they need to so that they can be as good as they can for you. Lord, we also want to lift up those who are struggling financially. Pray that we would be the church for them. Pray for those who might be getting scammed today. Uh, and, and we pray for our niece that is, is dealing with those kind of things. Lord, um, as we think about all those things that we're lifting up, sometimes they overwhelm us. We know that it does not overwhelm you, but we thank you for the many ways that you teach us how to live in a world that we live in. One of the things that you've taught us is how to pray in times that we don't even know what to pray for. And we, we pray that prayer today together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the things that we talk a lot about here at the church is how grateful we are for this church. How this church has been able to keep on doing the ministries that it has been doing for years. Because of the giving people that attend here and that worship with us. We thank you for that. And as we think about our offering this morning, let me remind you that the offering plates are, are by the doors if you want to give your offering this morning. And as Jen steps forward to, to pl play our offering piece, and um, we have someone who's going to sing for us this morning the, uh, as, as Chris comes forward to, to share with us. Let us... Um, Remember and thank God for what he has given us. So let's prepare our hearts for such a time as this.
Lord God, as we receive this offering, we pray that you would bless it and bless us to your use. May we communicate your kingdom with what we receive. And Lord, as we go to your word today, we pray that you would bless this time and that we would remember these words that we hear from the Old Testament and that it would transform who we are. And we pray this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Scripture passage that we're looking at today is from, from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, and also verses 15 and 16. And it reads like this. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. And then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Abram fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come. To be your God and the God of your descendants after you. God also said to Abram, as for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai. Her name will be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. And so this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So in 2007, in May, um, I graduated from seminary. And at the beginning of a July 1st of that year, I started my first appointment um, at Johnsonburg United Methodist Church. And, and I was also associate pastor at Kane First United Methodist, where I was doing a lot of the youth work there. And if you know where St. Mary's is in, in Pennsylvania, you know where Johnsonburg is. And, and, and if you would drive through Johnsonburg, you would know you were there um, because it's kind of stinky. Um, it is a paper mill town. Um, the people there are great, but it is a, a pretty stinky town. Um, um, I loved that place. It was a great place to learn, and I loved the people there just as I have loved the people in any community that I found myself with in. So, but something happened to me early on there that I am quite used to now, but I wasn't at the time. I remember the first time that it happened. Um, it was a day off for me, and I was dressed in my casual clothes, and I wasn't thinking of our church at all. I was trying to have a down kind of day just to, to, to chill and to regroup. And, and I went to the, to the grocery store where it happened. Picture this, I am walking down the aisle at the grocery store. It was quite, quite a small one, kind of like the H&H that we have here in town. And I hear someone say, hello, pastor. It came from across the store and it came from someone that I didn't even know or I had not seen before. They were looking at me and I was kind of looking behind me, kind of like, who are they talking to? Um, but the, uh, I was not even working, and they were calling me pastor. Evidently, he knew what I did, and he called me that. So politely, I said, hello. Now, I think that comes with the, the robe and the stool, this, this title of pastor. Um, not many other professions actually does that happen to. Maybe a doctor. Like, I, I, I don't see people seeing a teacher at, at the grocery store and say, hello, teacher, um, or hello, unemployed Bob, um, uh, or, or someone who makes meatballs. Hello, meatball. Um, so, um, 
<laughs> sorry, meatball lady. Okay, sorry about that. But my name, my name was changed, right? It was changed to that of pastor. You know, it bothered me at first as I thought, whether I'm working or not, I am pastor. Um, and, and there was a little, wait a minute, don't slap a title on me. Know me. My name is Jeff. But probably more than anything, I was afraid. I was afraid that my humanness would somehow taint or mess up this title of pastor. My name had been changed. Now, in, in the passage of Scripture that we are looking at today, we see some, some people whose names were changed. Um, names had power in the ancient world. Um, if you look at um, Adam, by naming animals, Adam just demonstrated his mastery over them. In a similar way, God's changing Abram's name to Abraham and Sarai's name to Sarah signifies a... Uh, uh, both the reiteration of a covenant promise and the designation of these people as God's chosen servants. Like, I have a role now to live out now that my name is pastor. These people have a role to live out as God's chosen servants, as servants of God. Abraham has a task to live out. And did you see how old he was in the Scripture passage? He was 90 meaning that our task or our role could come at any age. Now, if you were here last week, we saw uh, God make a promise uh, with Noah that God would not destroy the people again. And here we see a promise that God will multiply the nation of Abram. His offspring would someday outnumber the grains of sand. And his name is changed to Abraham, from Abram to Abraham. And to really understand the significance of this name change, I think we need to look at what his name was in Hebrew, the, the original language that this was written in. His name would have been pronounced Avram with a V. And the first part of his name, Av, means father, and ram, the second syllable, means exalted, to raise up. So Avram means exalted father, and Abraham means the father of many. This is the promise that he gives to Abram. And we know uh, one thing about looking at the scriptures and, and, and reading them and, and seeing how God works in our life is that God does not fail on his promises. Sarah's name was also changed. Sarai is sometimes tr translated as quarrelsome or contentious. And Sarah means princess, which that's a pretty big jump there. His, his, his name, her name being changed. Now, I, I don't know if you've ever checked what your name meaning is, you know, uh, what, what your name is. We, we have talked about that some in, in small groups and on our Zoom meetings. Um, but have you thought about this? Have you thought about this? When you follow Christ, your name has been changed. Your, um, they are changed to the name of disciple. And it basically means a pupil or, or of a teacher or a student of the teacher. Now, if you th so how do we do that? If you think about it, um, the way we better ourselves at a trade or a subject is we go to school to better ourselves at, at it um, or surround ourselves with people that might be good at it. Um, I know that I could probably use a good math class because my math has become quite fuzzy. Um, we may want to take up a trade, right, too? Um, and so that we might take a class on a, 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 a computer program to, to understand it or to utilize it to its fullest. But what about us as disciples? How do we do that? What about our lives? Do we want the best? the best that God has to offer? Are we, are we ready to change into a disciple 
of God? Are we ready to change our name to that of disciple? You know, a lot of us, if not most of us or all of us, live really, really distracted lives. I'm there a lot of times. And you know what? We chase this thing over here, and then we start chasing that thing over there. And before you know it, our focus is completely gone. So wouldn't it be great to have the focus of that of a disciple? Now, it it may sound somewhat cultish, like changing your name, following a teacher, surrendering your will. And you know what? That is somewhat of a challenge, is it not? Especially as we travel through this season of Lent. Yet God is not asking us by being a disciple to set aside who you are in, like you would be in a cult. They would. But rather, we are to use the gifts within us to serve the kingdom and the community of faith. Use who we are to serve the world that we live in. And part of that is surrendering. And surrendering is hard. You know, a lot of us are control freaks. And you may be saying this morning, oh, I have no problem with control. But I heard something this week that kind of helps us understand if we are or not uh, control freaks. It said that a good check to see if you really need to be in control is to check out how you react if something gets in the way of getting your tasks done for the day. Does it really frustrate you if somebody interrupts that or something interrupts that? If so, you may be a control freak. Think about that. Are you willing to be a disciple? Are you willing to have your name be changed? Are you willing to be identified as Christian? You know, one of the things that I forget, I think, too, that we forget in this whole process of becoming a disciple is actually the process. Um, when, when I create a pre- piece of art or somebody can pr- creates a piece of art or when someone builds something or when somebody b- bakes something, there is a process. It takes time. And, and one of the things that we even have to look at when we look at the person of Abraham is when he first started having the conversations with God, he was 75 years old. And how old is he now that he's making a covenant with God? He's 90. I'm sure there was times that uh, that, uh, he was uh, struggling with where he was supposed to go or, or that he was distracted. So this disciple thing is not something that happens for most of us, maybe all of us, overnight. Sometimes the process is 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 part of the journey it is the journey and and you have heard it said that good things are are the things that we wait for right Um, and i am and i'm sure that those who are disciples all have times sometimes of wondering wondering if god is there not knowing what to do next and one of the things we see along in the journey um we see Abraham losing some things, and that's part of being a, a disciple too, a ripping away of self. We, we see in Abraham's journey that he lost, his, he lost his home. He lost his security. And then in the Scripture passage that we see today, what did he lose? He lost his name. It is a ripping away. A part of being a, pro- a disciple is the process of discovering ourselves in Christ. And there will be a refining process when we go through that. Where God gets rid of the things that might be distracting us. And you know what? Again, that does not happen overnight. So please, please don't give up. You know, we live in a a push-button society. We click on something and it's immediately happening. Um, We click... And we expect an immediate response when we, we push a button, like on a vending machine. How many of you expect a candy bar to come right out? How many of us have hit the, the machine when that doesn't happen right away? God will be patient with us, and we're going to need to be patient with us as well. So, has your name been changed? Has your name been changed? 
You know, I have been doing this, this pastor thing for a while now, and I am used to the name, yet I am still a learner, a disciple. I go to the teacher. Question is, do you? Would you like help with it? You know, the promises are there, folks. It isn't the easiest journey. There is grace involved. There is forgiveness involved. But I can get, guarantee you, folks, that it is the best. Let's journey together. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, as we think about our names being changed to that of disciple, or maybe it continues to be that of disciple, and we want to go deeper. Lord, I just pray that you would continue to refine us, to continue to show us who you are through your word, through each other, through our experience and our traditions. And we just pray, Lord, that you would continue to refine us. And we pray this in your most blessed name. Amen. So as we sing our final hymn today, we're going to be looking at another name for God, God Almighty, El Shaddai. So if you're able to stand um, this morning and sing where you're at. So I know we live in a pretty distracted world, and I'm going to be praying for you as we live into these names that God has given us, and you can be praying for me. But let's go forth with this truth. We have a God that has shown us grace. We have a God that has shown us unfailing love, and we have a spirit that does a continual work within and through us. Let's go forth with that truth, and let's go forth in peace. Amen. If you want to stay where you're at this morning, I'll come forward. I'll be able to say good morning to you. And then uh, we can go where we need to go this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. It was good to have you here. <laughs>